Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachakwarash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to um, deal with a question that was asked on a comment board that's pursuant to uh, Revelation 22 and 3. But I believe the question was really about Revelation 22 and 2. Um, but I'll just start at 1 and uh, read down. And ultimately, we can uh, get some understanding. I'm going to try to make this uh, as quick and precise as possible um, because this is speaking of the new world to come, the new kingdom under the authority of the Messiah. All right. And uh, here's 144. Okay. Now I'll start here at Revelation 22 and 1. All right. And what will the 144, all right, um, entail? You know what will be implemented into the uh, their their inward parts as rulers of this earth. You know all Israel will be blessed to have the law, statutes, and commandments written in their inward part. All right, but the 144,000, as we read in Revelation the 14th chapter. Okay, Revelation the 14th chapter. It tells you what. Speaking of the 144, it says uh, Revelation 14 and 4 says these are they which were not defiled with women. But these are virgins. These are the leaders of the nation of Israel. Okay. Chosen from the foundation of the earth to be perfect and blameless. Which that is the way the Lord is going to restore all things through that remnant. Okay. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. And that started in the heavens. Okay. But that authority and government will now play out on earth. These will redeem from among men being the first fruits unto God and unto the lamb. So when you look up this word first fruits, okay, um, because we know the kingdom of heaven is going to be an operating government, okay, but it's just that we're blessed to uh, the government that we're going to have. We're going to have perfect bodies and we're going to rule, all right, with righteous authority as Adam was supposed to in his uh, descendants, okay, since the garden pretty much, you know, we fell and this earth has been ran by particular nations who have not all right um led with the authority of righteousness all right we had our 40 years of peace under solomon but then that's pretty much it now as you go to the the the, the greek word here it's a parka i'll just get to the point it says persons and superior in excellence to others of the same class so all israel will be on a high level all right, but as the scriptures say, the house of David shall be as God. Okay, just trying to give you a visual of what we have coming, man. All right, this is uh, Zechariah 12 and 8. In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. So all of our people are going to have power. They're going to be mighty, okay, on a, on a whole nother level. And the house of David shall be as God. Okay, as the angel of Yahweh before them. All right, <laughs> so we're going to be changed into something uh, on a whole nother level, man. And the house of David is the 144,000, the tabernacle of David. Okay, that's why when you read verse 1 in Revelation 14, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. You see that? So joint heirs and authority. With Yahweh Shai is what the 144,000 will be blessed with. Okay, that's the governing body. So once that's established, we're going to get the book of Revelation 22 and 1. Because also when you get the prior chapter, all right, Revelation 22, um, it's talking about the establishment of the, the, the tabernacle of David. You know, the scriptures say the tabernacle of God is with men. He's going to wipe away the tears, New Jerusalem. Okay, that's the governing body. That's the government. Okay, because the law shall go forth of Jerusalem, right? So as you read verse uh, 1 in chapter 22, and Lord will, I'll get into chapter 21 as a uh, whole breakdown. It says, and he shewed me a pure river of water of life. You see that? And we know that this truth is likened unto water, clear as crystal 
proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And where is the throne of God and of the Lamb? It's going to go forth of Jerusalem. Okay? Let's get that. Micah, the fourth chapter. Okay? In the first verse, it says, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. That's the government. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, okay, the government, and let's see what that is, into the uh, house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And these are the heathen nations that are going to have to be taught, because according to the new covenant, no Israelite will have to teach one another. And we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay, so that's ultimately what this is speaking of. The, the, the pure water of life, okay, proceeding from the throne of God, okay, the throne of David, okay, and who will sit on the throne of David? Yahawashai, Hamashiach, Yahawashai, okay? So this is speaking of the, the, the law and righteousness that will issue forth from the elect, all right, under the authority of Yahawashai. Okay, read Psalms, the 72nd chapter, to get a glimpse of what Yahweh Shah is coming to bring to this earth. We're going to be abundant in righteousness, in, in, in uh, land. Okay, we won't, uh, this, the rulership we have won't be as the rulership of Esau, Edom, or even these heathen. All right, now verse 2 says, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was the tree of life. And we know that the tree of life was to represent the ways of righteousness okay which bear all right 12 manner of fruits you see that T 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations okay because you have to remember when adam right when you get genesis the second chapter as we know adam was supposed to rule the earth under the ways of righteousness, right? Now, um, Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. See, the breath of life is the ways of righteousness, how to treat the earth. Okay, and this particular seed line through Abel, and then, of course, you know, he was slew Seth, you know, Enos, and so forth. You know, even all the way up to Abraham, this was the line, Isaac and Jacob, this is the line that were given the ways of life, the ways of righteousness. And he became a living soul. And man, this man became a living soul. Okay, this under this man's authority, all right, was, was life, man. Okay, and those who issued forth out of Eve, okay, were what? The children of the living, man. Okay, who, who ultimately were supposed to uphold these ways. In which the earth would flourish under those ways, right? So it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, which what does the word Eden mean? All right? The word Eden, Idan, means what? Pleasure or a paradise. Okay? Luxury, dainty, delight, finery, delight. Okay? And we're going to, the earth is, 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 was supposed to be a luxury. But through envy of the devil, as the scripture said, death entered in, in the curse. Okay? So it says, um, eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, which is Adam, which wasn't the first man created, but Adam was supposed to rule the earth in righteousness with those ways, man. Okay? And the Lord gave him a help meet, Eve, because you need a wife, ultimately, to uh, forward a legacy. Okay? So these were the children of life, all right? And out of the ground made God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food in the tree of life also in the midst of the garden in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know, you had those ways of those different heathen as well, man. Which when, the, when, when we establish the kingdom of heaven, all of those, those ways will be wiped away. There will only be one way <clears throat> that the nations are to, to, to follow after, man. Okay, but as you read it, basically, through Adam ruling the earth in righteousness, the earth was an absolute paradise. You see that? So going back here, 
to Revelation, um, the uh, Revelation, the 22nd chapter, in the second verse, in the midst of the street of it, and on the other side of the river, and there was the tree of life, okay? So under the authority of Yahawashai, okay, who will put the law, statutes, and commandments within the nation of Israel, okay, uh, uh, starting with the 144,000, everything will be restored to righteousness, man. Okay, and the earth ultimately will be healed, which bear manner, all man bear 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And it's beyond ultimately the, the leaves and fruit, but ultimately the ways of righteousness being restored on the earth, man. And that even starts here with us teaching this word. Let's get this in the book of Second Edras, the uh, second chapter in the 18th verse, speaking to the nation of Israel, for thy help I will send my servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah. Okay, after who now says Esau, but if you look it up, and I uh, forget what translation it shows you that this is talking about Isaiah. Okay, all right, Isaiah and Jeremiah, after whose counsel I have sanctified, okay, and prepared for the 12 trees laden with diverse fruits, meaning this doctrine, okay, because Isaiah and Jeremiah are just symbolic of the leaders, the prophets that will be sent to keep Israel in the mind frame that the heavenly father would want them to be in man so he would send his servants all right which it says isaiah and jeremiah but it's ultimately symbolic of the prophets that he would send because isaiah and jeremiah had already had their prophecy okay this is ezra this is around the uh the uh, persian the medio persian empire so what he's speaking in 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 cold speaking symbolic after whose counsel i have sanctified Okay, meaning they would have the 100% truth, man. Okay, th there would be no gal found in their mouth. And their doctrine, okay, would lead to what? I have sanctified, whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for the 12 trees laden with diverse fruits, meaning the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and as many mountains flowing with milk and honey. Okay, now we know this is all symbolic because milk is is what symbolic of abundance of wealth honey sweet you know uh, riches and seven mighty mountains whereupon there grow roses and lilies whereby i will fill thy children with joy all right so our children will be filled with joy through the kingdom of heaven being established and the kingdom of heaven all right and this doctrine going forth is going to lead to what all right the lord returning and and planting those law statutes and commandments in us and then once we're crown we're going to come down from off of those chariots and rule this earth in utter complete righteousness man and through us establishing the laws man this earth is going to you know uh, uh push out an abundance of fruit lilies and life man as it was supposed to be it will be turned back to paradise all right so it says and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and yes you know um though the nations will be beat down for a period of a thousand years as the scriptures say in proverbs 29 and 2 when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice there will there will be a point where the nations are are going to want to learn our ways you know after that a thousand year period because during that a thousand year period there's going to be an enslavement we're going to beat them over the head with a rod of iron Okay, and force our ways upon them because they're not going to have the laws written in their inward parts. So they're going to have to be taught to do what's right. Okay, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it rule, as we can see a wicked rulership right now, right now the people are mourning. Okay, so the, everything Esau does in his rulership is to, to destroy the people. All right, but what's, what's so beautiful about the kingdom of heaven you know, after you Edomites are done away with, okay, all of the nations will be held to a righteous standard, okay, and the foods, the earth, the atmosphere will heal them, okay, but it all starts with Yahawashai, okay, who will put the law, statutes, and commandments in the inward part of the elect so that the earth can be ran this way, 
Okay, so the, when the righteous are in authority, yes, the people will eventually rejoice at a righteous rulership because we're going to be fair. We're going to be balanced. All right, we're not going to just go around the earth looking for somebody to destroy. Now, when Esau's around, of course, but that you know that's going to have its end after the a thousand year period. The nations are going to serve their judgment, you know. But you know, once paradise is set up, you know they'll be on the earth, man. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to have particular things that they can enjoy. They're going to have families, okay? They're just going to belong to us. As you can get that in Leviticus, the 25th chapter. Leviticus, the 25th chapter, and around the 45th verse, it says, Moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy. They will be our possession, all right? The heathen will be our inheritance as being joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, man. What does the scripture say? Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance okay real quick let's get revelation 2 revelation 2 and 27 and 26 and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of a potter they shall be broken in shivers even even as i have received of my father and i will give him the morning star which is that light that light will be put inside of us man you see, but we're going to have power over the nations, man, even as he have received of his father. And you can get that in Psalms, the second chapter, where he says what? Um, it's Psalms 2 and 8, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see that? And we're going to rule them with the rod of iron under the authority of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, but going back to Leviticus, moreover, 25 and 45, moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land. See, they're going to have children, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for possession. They shall be your bondmen forever, but over your brethren and children of Israel, you shall not rule over one another with vigor. All right, so there you have it. We will have the, the heathen, all right, as our possession, all right, but as we rule the earth and it's brought back to paradise, these nations will be healed, okay? But the healing all starts with Israel, man, under Yahawashai, okay? All Israel will be perfect, man. And through that, this earth will be turned back to paradise, man. Okay? We'll, the, 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 everything, man. You know, there's not just the fruit, but everything. Okay? Uh, uh, that issues forth from this earth will be for the benefit of the people, man. The rulership now, everything is under a curse, man. You see that? Everything is under a curse, man. Let's get the book of Ezekiel 47 and 12. All right? This is a look into the kingdom. Okay, and by the river upon the bank thereof, and on this side, and on that side shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade. See here, things fade away, things are dead, things are genetically modified, which leads to what? Death. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, all right, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine. So this earth will be a, a hub of righteousness, man. Okay, the, uh, touching particular things will be able to heal you, man. Okay, the, uh, trees, you know, everything will issue forth life, man. There's going to be gold in the streets. Okay, this is Revelation 2 and 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God, man. That all starts with Yahweh Shai, man, and the righteous ways being issued forth in the planet Earth, man. Okay? So as you keep going, in the midst of the street of it, and on other, every side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. Okay? And that entails all the ways of righteousness leading to the earth turning back into paradise, man. Okay? And the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. So, yes, 
you know, starting with the nation of Israel, everything will be healed, man. Especially after you Edomites are done away with, man. Then life can fully start, man, because you're gone. And everything issued from that forth uh, uh, going, going forward, man, okay, will be in order. Now the heathen will struggle with sin because the ways of righteousness won't be in them. We still have to judge at particular times. But as we read, there's going to come a point where they're going to want to learn the ways of righteousness because they're going to be like, this is a blessed seed, man. They're going to know that these are the children of the most high God. And eventually they're going to want to follow our ways. There's going to be a point of resistance and, you know, but eventually after that a thousand year period, everything will be all good, man. The air will be clean. Okay. The water will be clean. Okay, everything will, you won't have a, a formula to give your children, breastfeeding will be the end thing. Everything will go back to the way it was supposed to be. Verse 3, and there shall be no more curse. All right, and the curse started with what? Adam, all right, uh, uh, Eve sinning and then Adam sinning. And pretty much since that time, we've had to deal with the flesh. We, we've had to work, so say, to eat, you know, but everything will be given back to us under the second Adam all right as the scriptures say <clears throat> as the scriptures say the first Adam Salakia first Adam first Corinthians 15 and 45 and so it is written the first Adam was made a living soul all right, through the Lord, you know, ultimately uh, breathing the breath of life into him. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, man. You see that? So now, under uh, under Adam in the in the kingdom to come, which is Yahawashai, the spirit will be put inside of us, man. Okay, there's another one in uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, I believe. Speaking of Adam. Romans 5 and 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, meaning after Adam's transgression, you know, we eventually fell. We had particular righteous men, but as a nation, you know, we would continue to fall, man. And then the Lord gave us the law, statutes and commandments written on stone at the time of Moses, which led to even more death, man, because ultimately we could not adhere to that covenant. So what? Curses came, death came. Which leads to what? The earth not being taken care of by the people who are ultimately supposed to rule it. Okay, which leads to death, which leads to confusion, which leads to sickness, which leads to uh, homosexuality, all of these wicked ways spreading. Okay, that curse is going to be done away with, man. Okay? Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him that was to come. Okay? So you see this new world okay the the kingdom of heaven okay uh, uh ran under the authority of hamashiach yahawashai okay it's going to take away the curse okay and it starts with us preaching his word because he's basically removed the curse of the law away and gave us grace and gave us the holy spirit to now we can preach this word man all right, what, what, what are gifts, man, which is going to lead to what? The kingdom of heaven coming, because as the prophets speak, things happen on the earth. So there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God, which is the throne of David, and the lamb shall be in it because he's going to sit on the throne of David. Okay, it's going to be Yahweh Shai, the 144,000, and his servants shall serve him. All right, and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads, man. So as you continue to read down, it says, and there shall be no light there and they need no candle, neither sun, light nor sun for the Lord God giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Does this mean the sun and the moon aren't going to have their, 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 uh, lot? Does it mean we're not going to have, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, light? No, it's basically saying we are going to be the light because as you, uh, read in revelation two and 28, Yahweh Shai said he's going to give us the morning star meaning he's going to put the law statutes and commandments within our inward parts man we're going to be the light 
okay? We're not going to need a physical temple, all they will, although we will have palaces. Ultimately, we, we will be the light under Yahweh Shai ruling the earth, man. So, yes, there will be a period that we, you know, uh, uh, you know, beat these nations down. You know, the judgment that's written, you know, Psalms 149, all of that has to happen, you know. But as we always teach, there will be a, a, a moment as well in a day. All right. Well, if they bless us, we will bless them. They pay their tribute and keep our ways. They will receive blessings, man. But ultimately, the whole earth in its entirety will be turned to paradise, which will be the healing of the nations, man. Because right now, the earth is under a curse. All right. And why? What's the ultimate reason? Esau, Edom is ruling. But what is he ruling with? Wickedness. That's why it says in Isaiah 24, therefore, a curse have devoured the earth, man. You see that? And what does that all go back to, man? Israel falling and being separated from their power and not ruling the earth with those ways of righteousness, man. Hosea 4, all right, and 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for Yahweh hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, no, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Okay, because the ways of righteousness are not upheld, man. Because of, you know, prophecy heathen had to rule. And we've been out of order. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing, committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. All right? I Meaning we kill one another, man. All right? Very filthy and polluted nation. This is why we're calling you to repent. Therefore, show the land mourn. And every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the field and the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea shall be taken away. Why? Because Israel was out of order. So once we're put, put back in order and the law's written in us and there's no way that we can sin or go off. What's going to happen, man? It's paradise is going to be set up on the planet Earth, man. We'll end it off here in Isaiah the 34th chapter. Or is that Ezekiel 34? Yep. Hold on, give me one second here. Ezekiel, Isaiah 34. Uh, let's see if this is it. Um, no, I don't think this is what it is. This is the rest of it. Maybe Ezekiel 34. Mm-hmm. Uh, shepherd over there. Yep. Ezekiel 34 and 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods man the earth is going to be paradise man wherever we go we're going to be good all right you go to the woods right now man your ass gonna be scared as hell man <laughs> it says and i will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing you see that the places round about my hill which is jerusalem where the law will issue forth from. Okay? And who's going to be on that, on that hill? Yahweh Shai. All right. In the throne of David, which is the 144,000, man. And David is the head of that church. It says, And I will cause the shower to come down in his season, and there shall be showers of blessing, man. And that's the ways of righteousness flourishing in the earth. The tree shall yield her fruit. Okay? And of the tree shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am Yahweh when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves unto them, man. So ultimately, the earth is going to be turned back into a paradise, which would be a benefit for everybody, man. You're going to breathe clean air. Okay, you're not going to walk on concrete. All of these things will be done away with. No Wi-Fi. All right, destroying your, your system. You know, 5G, none of these vaccines, none of that. The earth itself is going to be a blessing and be the medicine. Breathing will be medicine. Touching a tree 
I was reading something a while back where people in the ancient world were, were able to touch trees and hold them for for an amount of time to heal themselves from different ailments. Well, the earth is going to be on that type of level and vibration, man. Remember, we're going to have stones all in the streets, gold. All right. It's going to be a, a, a hell of a view. And this is what we're ultimately fighting for. So I just wanted to go through that real quick. Um, you know, I have other precepts in my mind. You know, but uh, yeah, I'll get this one. I'll end it off here in Tobit. Okay. Tobit 13 and 11. Many nations shall come from far to the name of the Lord with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. See that? All the nations are going to have to bow to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and the elect, man. In all Israel at the end of the day. But they're going to have gifts, all right, in their hands. It says, Cursed are all they which hate thee, and blessed shall all be which love thee forever. For, for the nations that are obedient and keep, you know, their, you know, pay their tribute and custom, they're going to be blessed, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Some, some brothers think that it's weak to say that, but yes, the nations will be blessed under, under our rulership if they keep the ways of righteousness. Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just, for they shall be gathered together and shall bless the Lord of the just. O oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges, for they shall rejoice for thee when they have seen all thy glory and shall be glad forever. Let my soul bless God the great King, for Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones, thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. And the streets of Jerusalem shall be bathed with beryl and carbuncle and stones of Ophir, and all the streets shall say hallelujah, all right? And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be God, which has extolled it forever. So with that, hopefully you are edified. On to the next one. Shalom.